Whenever I go back to re-review these certain cars in GT6 that I feel have the best chances of coming back, either in GT7 as an update or maybe in the next game, there are certain ones which almost feel like they are already in the game. It's such an obvious pick, such a no-brainer, that it feels weird that they're not in the game. For me, the C5 Corvette is always one of those. I catch myself thinking, wait a minute, isn't that already in GT7 or wasn't it in Sport? It feels like it kind of was. And of course, it isn't, and it's so weird not to have it. And this is another one of those, the DC5 Integra. Now, of course, there were a couple of different Integras, a couple of different DC2s, and of course, we finally got the DC2 back, back in, what was it, GT Sports as an update car, and of course, we had it in this game from day one. My absolute favourite JDM car is the DC2, more specifically the DB8 in particular, which is the rarer four-door version. This one, though, is also a car which I have a lot of love for. I have not driven either of these in real life, a DC2 or a DC5. And to be honest, I'm a little bit worried to do so, because they say don't meet your heroes, I absolutely love the DC2, but I have driven a couple of Civic Type R's. I drove an FN2 Mugen and an FD2, which of course is another car which I believe does deserve a revisit, because I could definitely see that one coming back as well, and I wasn't entirely thrilled on either. I felt like they were cars which really need to be worked super hard to get the best out of them, which of course is part of that VTEC allure. But the problem is, it means that they're boring 90% of the time because you're just toddling around in what feels like a normal car. Some people might love that, but for me it doesn't quite feel special enough compared to what I would have expected. But the Integra, I really hope that's not the case, and I guess we'll find out sometime in Beards and Cars. For now though, this one is such an obvious choice that it is shocking to me that we don't have the DC5 back. We have the DC2 back in all of its premium HD glory, and this one was the premium version of it in Gran Turismo 6. Now, for full exposure, I actually don't like this version quite as much as the non-premium, because it's the facelift. And I personally don't find this facelift quite as good looking as the non-premium, what is it, like 2001, I wanna say? Something like that, the one that's a bit sharper looking on the front end. This one, though, did also benefit from having the body kit. You could do aero upgrades to it, so it was a proper premium car. And in terms of spec, it's interesting to compare the DC5 to something like a DC2, because despite being so clearly the same lineage, they're quite different in their approach. For one thing, this car's quite a bit heavier than the DC2. It's 1180 kilos, which definitely isn't too heavy at all, but that's a fair amount more. What's that, the best part of 100 kgs, something like that? In terms of horsepower, though, it does make up for it because it has 216 to the, again, I want to say high 180s, around 190 region, if I recall, on a DC2. So that's a pretty decent increase. Being a VTEC Honda, of course, the torque isn't exactly its strong point. It's a bit of a super bike in terms of its engine. 152 foot-pounds, of course, naturally aspirated 2.0-litre engine, and duh, front-wheel drive, because obviously. The price tag is pretty cheap, 27 grand. I feel like it's one of those cars that if it did come back, it would probably be about the same. I could see them maybe changing it to 30 grand, something like that. And if they were to bring it back, it seems kind of obvious that this would be the one since it was already a premium. Doesn't necessarily mean that it will be, but I'd say chances are. It does beg the question though, what would it be like if it were to return? Well, the DC2 already gives us a semi-idea of what it would be because we do have that one, of course, in the game. I've done a spoon special projects of that car. It's a fantastic machine to work with. One of the most legendary front wheel drive cars ever. I'm not sure what you could say is the most respected front wheel drive. I'm sure there are quite a few different cars vying for that position, but the DC2 is definitely up there, and it was probably the reigning king at the time, if not for many years after. I'm sure for some people still is to this day. This one, I don't quite hear that level of respect for. And I get the vibe, and again, this is coming from someone who hasn't driven either, so I certainly stand to be corrected. I get the vibe that the DC5 was aiming to be a little bit more accessible, almost like a bit more of a hot hatch approach, where it's got a little bit more space, a little bit more practicality, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, a little bit more maybe forgiving, perhaps slightly more comfortable for longer journeys, that kind of vibe. I could be completely wrong, but that's the vibe that it gives off to me, and that's certainly how it feels in the game. Now, of course, there was a touring car version. In fact, there were a couple of touring car versions. The iconic one with the mostly black and then painted front and rear end that you could change the color on. Very similar paint scheme to the S2000 LM race car. And then, of course, there was this one, which had the touring car version with that kind of crow's beak on the front end, finished in white. Again, 
I can easily see them bringing that car back too. I mean, I, I don't know exactly where it would fit. I guess Group 4 would be a fairly obvious choice for it. And I feel like a lot of people would probably really love to use a DC5 touring car in Group 4. I think it would get a lot of use. It would depend on balance of performance, but here in particular, of course, focusing on the road car, to me, there is absolutely no reason not to have this car back. They are still adding JDM icons, most recently, of course, the Evo 9. Very, very well received car, especially now with the engine swap as well. So of course, of course this car has to come back. I think it's a question of not if, but when. I could easily see it being a day one Gran Turismo 8 vehicle, if you will. Of course, the limitations of tuning in Gran Turismo 6 meant that it wasn't the most powerful thing around. With an engine swap, well, the potential is definitely there. Imagine, for example, a DC5 in Gran Turismo 7 with a wide body, stripped out with maybe the uh, the Super GT NSX engine, <laughs> something like that. That would be kind of a beast. But even without it, much like the DC2, it's just such a fun, engaging car to drive anyway that you almost don't need to do that much to it. Plus, you could do some pretty cool special projects on it as well, like the Mugen. So for me, I absolutely think that the DC5 is coming back at some point. It's just a question of when and which game it's going to arrive in, either this one or the next one. That is it for my thoughts on the DC5, though, in terms of it coming back and why it should. And I'd love to hear yours. Is this a fan favourite? I'm sure for many people it is, much like the DC2 was. And yeah, I'd love to hear if anyone agrees with me that this is a dead cert, if you will, for coming back to Gran Turismo. But I'll see you next time with more. And for now, thanks for watching.